about right, which it does actually, it looks very close. So if we just run the lathe, I've got it all in gear. I've got the cutter backed out so that I'm not in danger of getting anywhere near the workpiece. And I'm just eyeing up that the cutter is following as I would expect, and it seems to be. So what I can do then is to actually, with it in the forward part of its uh, uh, engagement on the uh, threads, I can just bring the cutter in and then using the, the top side here, I'm just aligning the cutter with the groove. That should now be following the groove very exactly. Right, so having had a little bit more of a play, I've discovered that 2.2 is a little bit far out. It actually wanders off the thread slightly. So I had an, another little uh, look at things. I measured the pitch, just one pitch, rather than trying to do it mathematically. And that worked out at over 2, but closer to 2 than 2.2. And so looking at, again at the threads that are available to me on the lathe, I've changed out that, that driver wheel again. And we've got it set up for a 2mm pitch. And if we uh, watch the machine now, we'll be able to see that the, uh, the tool actually follows the, uh, the thread pretty pretty accurately. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, uh, count back the, uh, the extra number that we need to turn because we only want to turn up to 22 and a half uh, revolutions so that that's the full wind of the clock. So we'll count back to that point and that will give us the, uh, the starting location. Right, so we're getting closer now. From this point here, we want to cut another seven and a half turns up here. This is the starting point obviously, so one, one full revolution, two, three, four, five, fifteen. Fifteen to that point. So from there we want to cut another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half revolutions. I'm getting the lathe so that the backlash is going in the right direction. So I'm, I'm reversing it up a little bit first. And then right, now we're jogging it forward. So what I'll do is just jog it forward until the cutter is so I'm just coming into that groove now. So the cutter is at that point there. I'll just align the cutter using the uh, top side here. We are now aligned with the uh, with the lash of the of the carriage, going in the right direction, and we're lined up with the 15th full revolution. So I've put a mark, you can't see it from the camera, but I've put a mark on the end of the fusey here. Uh, I'll move the camera around actually so you can see it, because we use it to count revolution. Okay, so you can see that I've put a mark there, that's the half, and this is the full. So what we're going to do is ignore what the cutter is doing, because that's going to be following the lash on the, uh, on the threads and hopefully the lash will return to the correct orientation when we go back in the right direction. So we want to count seven and a half full turns out. Let's put it into reverse and count back. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 and a half. Now, if we were to just flick this back into forward drive, then the lash of the cutter would be a problem. So I'm going to take it another three revolutions from there. One, two, three, let's make it four, four. 
put it into forward and then one, two, three, four. There then. In theory, we are now at our zero point. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put a little scratch with the cutter at that point just as an indication because I want to see if I can come back to that by replicating it again so let's go forwards and see where we're at so half a revolution one two seven now will the cutter go back into the slot? it will so, last thing I'm going to do before actually making the cuts is I'm, I'm just going to turn up a, a, a brass support just to put a little bit of pressure on the end of the fusee which will support it in the tailstock so that when I'm putting the uh, um, cutting it I don't want it to try and rip the piece out of the, uh, out of the chuck. So I'll just nip over to another lathe and I'll do that now. Right, so now that we've got this far I'm going to put a very tentative scratch pass on. Okay, bringing you to a wider shot, I thought you might like to see the, um, uh, the action of the backlash of the carriage that I've been talking about. So keep an eye on this handle here and watch its movement in relationship to the, uh, the movement of the headstock and the movement of the, the tool in the, uh, in, the, in the tool post. So just have a, an eye on that. The first thing we're going to do, we've just finished the cut going in this direction. So the first thing I've, do, I've done is back out the cutter and we're going to come back in this direction. So I've put it into reverse, I've sped it up and let's go. So keep an eye on this. how many revolutions it took to pick up the backlash. If we just using forward and reverse without taking that backlash into account, every time you reverse the lathe you just wipe all the threads off. So uh, it's a very important thing to take into, into account. So I'm just going to jog it back to the uh, starting position. Just one more revolution. 
edges there and cut her back in again. Now we'll give it dial in a small amount, let it run, turn the speed right down and go. and rinse and repeat. Right, so hopefully that's going to be a slightly better shot for you. Uh, it does somewhat mean that I can't see what I'm doing, but uh, hopefully we'll get over that one. Uh, okay, so we're going to go, we're just going to jog in slowly now to the beginning of the cut. Okay, and as we go, as we begin the cut, I'm just going to plunge the cutter. And it begins cutting, and then, and then I flicked it over from jog to run. So we're just making light cuts because it's quite a deep plunge with a reasonably wide cutter. So I don't want to stress it out too much. Okay, so we've completed that cut, so we can now reverse the machine. Of course, all of this is being done with the half nuts fully engaged. I'm never disengaging the half nuts. Okay, again, we've slowed the lathe down. I'm now going to jog it in to the start of the cut. So we're getting close. Bring the tool in so that it's just starting to cut. And then over to run. Right, so we've now got the uh, grooves cut with the uh, Smart and Brown lathe and I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. What I'm just doing now is I'm putting the chain, presenting it to the original part of the fusee first and then putting a few turns on and I'm just going on to the new part of the thread that we've just cut. I just want to see how well it's sitting into the groove. 
I don't want it to feel tight at all. But then again, I don't want it to feel particularly sloppy either. It looks just nice. Yeah. So the next stage after this will be to just clean up the tips of the uh, thread with a file. And then we will go back to the Shawbin 102 and we'll turn down the top here ready to accept the stopwork cam. We'll just tidy up the thread now with a file. So we're literally just going to run it very slowly. Okay, so I'm just going to work as well on this little area that's got the uh, visible part of the soft solder joint there. So I'm just going to get a different file and work on that area. I'm just going to turn down the uh, the top here to 8mm, a spigot of 8mm and that's where the cam for the uh, stop work is going to go. Okay, so I think we've finished all the operations on the 102 now, so we can uh, break down this setup and take the part out. Let's have a look. We've uh, got it machined down to uh, eight millimeters on the uh, on that spigot there, and I've also reduced the length to 2.4, which is the size of the piece of. Uh, gauge plate that we're going to be using to make the uh, snail for the stop work and uh, I've taken it down as well so that it gives clearance for the front bearing surface of the arbor there so let's just whip it out of the three jaw, uh, the four jaw in fact and there we go take it over to the bench well, I'm quite pleased with that now that's the um, uh, the fusee repaired and ready to go back into the clock. Let's just test it between the plates. Yeah, we're going to need to rebrush the uh, front bearing anyway, but uh, it's uh, nicely between the fits nicely between the plates and gives uh, just enough room there for the the stop work for the top of the fusee there. So we'll get this. Stop work made, and then we can uh, call that job done.